Hey viewers, welcome to another game of Schedule Pro Gamer. Today we're doing game number two of the best of three between Lucifron as the Terran in the top left. And come on, yeah, there you can see it. Jadong is playing as EGJDRC as the Terran in the bottom right. Terran, Zerk in the bottom right. <laughs> so we have a Terran versus Zerk. And um, yeah, it is game number two, as I said, of a best of three. So um, keep in mind that even if the same person wins game one and two, I will put up a game three. It will be an anti-spoiler video then. And um, yeah, you will have to, uh, yeah, just ignore that if <laughs> the same guy uh, wins here. But it is for those, uh, those people that actually uh, see that there are, would only be two games out otherwise. And... Well, they would get spoiled because the guy that wins game one would win game two as well then. And obviously we don't want that. So um, that's why I put out anti-spoiler videos. And yeah, anyway, that being said, we are going into the match here. Uh, it seems that we are going to get the standard opening of walling off that base. And um, yeah, just producing some drones here on this side. Obviously going for the fast expansion here. I'm not sure, yeah, this is apparently a four player map without, uh, well, cross positions, uh, forced cross positions. Because uh, he is scouting to the sites and he is not going to find anyone. So I'm assuming that is, uh, well, this is also going there. Uh, this is because they, um, they do not know where the enemies are. So most of the time in these leaks, so this is Dreamhack which will be here. Yeah, DreamHack opened 2013. Um, most of the time in these leaks, uh, we will have uh, people spawning in cross positions because then you kind of remove this factor of luck from the game and that is exactly what we want. We want to have a game based on skill, not a game based on, uh, on luck. And the scouting information you get, uh, so the early, uh, earlier you scout, the better your information is going to be. But the information you get can actually be very, very valuable and it can determine the games very easily. And we don't want that. We want to have those, um, those skill games instead of the, the luck games and someone getting advantage just because they had a lucky scouting pattern. Because, um, yeah. There's really nothing to that, obviously. So um, the Terran player does find Jadong there. Lucifron, sorry. Lucifron does find Jadong there. And um, Jadong by now is scouting towards that, um, that top left because he knows that that SCV came past his, um, uh, past his overlord. And he knows that, well, the overlord or the the SCV probably came from there. Although there is a small chance that he would come from here, but well, he actually did send out this one, and he is going to send out one of his uh, zerklings because he wants to see what's going on. He's going to find three marines out, and that is going to put his mind at ease because three marines means that um, well, at least he's still in his base. He's not attacking, so he has only one. Uh, barracks out because otherwise there would be more and all in all yeah it's, it's good news for him basically so he just loses one zergling there and he's going to lose the second one as well two more zerglings then uh, sacrificing themselves for no reason so losing four zerglings for no reason whatsoever he knew what he needed to know and obviously you want to uh, to kind of put a zergling over here you want to put a circling maybe over here somewhere, like on the high ground, because you want to see whether whether your opponent moves out with his army. And if you have those scouts in the middle of the map, that is good enough. So normally that, that kind of scouting information is good enough to kind of provide you with enough warning to, uh, to not get surprised by the attack. And we are going to get three Marines on the watchtower and they are going to scout towards this base, I'm assuming. No, they're going to go to the natural expansion, in fact. Even though he knows that's up, he knows that's defended. So this is not going to do anything, even though 
if he went for that uh, for that third base, he would have done a lot better. He knows that that might be up, and if that's up, there's not going to be any defense there because the Zerg player would be spread too thin, and that is not something that you uh, can risk really. Um, yeah. The Queen's doing a little bit of damage there to one of those Hellions. Hellions and Marines out now. And he's going to try to put some pressure on. But with this many Queens, it is going to be hard to do that. Although this hatchery doesn't... Oh, it, it does have a Queen. Never mind. I just missed it. So yeah, I just have two additional Queens. Just for the fun of it. Just for the creep spread. And one of them is going to go over here to... Uh, to inject some larvae there and the other one is going to stay here just produce some of these creep tumors and obviously the creep tumors are the ones that uh, that spread the creep and you do want that you want to have that creep spread as widespread as possible and yeah this uh, this base is now up and running it should get its first uh, uh, well its first miners workers I guess uh, soon and well we'll have to just wait for that to happen for now yeah we're just focusing on getting that creep sprout going he is going to try to drop here which is going to be super successful because there's nothing defending this and wow this is actually a pretty big drop two hellbats and four hellions and that is going to be very very bad for the drone count but not really going for the drones here. He should have just rushed in for the drones. Would have been so much better. But he is still going for it. There you go. Getting the drones. And man, this is going to put Jado so far behind. Lucifron having a, well, a great easy time there. Uh, yeah, just dropping it in. Not really caring about anything. And then um, getting so much out of that. So, um... Oh, resources lost. Yeah, you can see that um, our Zerg player here is at so much more resources lost. 52 units lost. And although some of those will be the, the Zerglings, a lot of those were actually workers. So um, I can't pull up the, the actual workers. But yeah, here you can see he is still ahead in workers. But yeah, I, uh, I cannot see how many he killed. Because of this uh, this UI that they made, it disables the uh, it disables the, the, the normal uh, ability to show you that. So anyhow, um, it does seem that we are dropping once again. Oh come on, stop lagging! These replays are really not good for my computer. Apparently, either that or it's in the replays. I'm going to pause for a moment just to um, to remove this lag. Okay, we are back and we uh, just saw a drop here. Well, we are still seeing it. And we are going to take out a bunch. No, not that was not enough to make it worth it. But he still has all of his units. And he's actually going to get out. Yep, no problem. So he did kill a few units. Uh, about three more uh, drones. And yeah, that is good enough then. I mean, if you lose nothing for it, then yeah, of course it's good enough. We have a new drop coming in and this drop is still not done. He is still trying to get that done. Uh, however, he is going to lose his unit. Uh, his, um, oh, Medivac does survive and he is going to go in just with that. Uh, in the meantime, these guys just uh, take out the entire, well, or almost take out the entire base. But, well, all of the drones do get out. So really not a whole lot happening there and while we are in three bases now with those um, those hellbats and well going for uh, for uh, mutilists then mutilists are going to go do great against these drops obviously because they will take down those uh, those medifacts really easily plus all of the units that have currently been built uh, cannot go up against this. They cannot go up against uh, air units. So yeah, Mutilus, an excellent switch, which of course is nothing else. Uh, well, we expected nothing else. I mean, that's exactly what we expected out of this. Uh, well, a great player. So obviously he's going to think about what he wants to switch to. 
and he is going to uh, to go for Mutalis. And now I think the resources lost. Yeah, they're equal again. Because, well, these failed drops, even though they did some damage, didn't do nearly enough damage to make up for what they lost. And with the tech switch coming in, it is going to be very, very dangerous for this Terran player now. Because he keeps producing those Hellbats. And those Hellbats are g going to do nothing against this. Uh, yeah, they're just, um, they're just sitting there. They're just, uh, they can run around, but uh, they can't really do anything. So there is, a, a, or well, there are several turrets out actually. The missile turret is doing a good amount of damage, but it is, well, almost impossible to defend your entire base with just missile turrets. So he is probably going to find uh, a place to, uh, to invade at some point. And that place is over here apparently. Well, yeah, he does find that he can uh, he can shoot at things right here, and actually bounce off of the buildings. Oh, oh, oh! Widow mines coming in, but they don't burrow in time, so nothing happened. So we are going to take out a refinery here before it comes up, and it didn't get cancelled. So yeah, well, it's a little bit of a win at least. Refineries and, and such are not very expensive, so you shouldn't just be too happy about taking one out but still it is a little bit of minerals and that is great so we have more mutalisk out and yeah look at the amount of production going on it is uh, zirklings now zirklings and mutalisk and we do get burrow i like burrow i don't understand why people don't go for it more often because it is a really really great thing to have uh, especially for the lower level matches but also for the high level matches because most people don't run around with uh, with detection, especially uh, non-Zerk. Zerk, of course, has very good detecting uh, things, but someone like Terran, yeah, who's going to build a Raven, really? Um, so as long as they don't know what's going on, so uh, as long as they don't know that there are burrowed Zerklings uh, over the map or, uh, yeah, something like that. I don't know what you want to burrow, but Burrowed Zirklings would be a great uh, great option to go for. Once again, we have a drop, and this time it is Marines. The Marines are going to do a little bit of damage, but not enough, I have to feel. I don't know what they did, though. Let's see, resources lost. No, he didn't do enough, because he actually lost more than, uh, than he gained. He's uh, about 100 behind now. Whereas previously, he was at least... Uh, 150 or so ahead all in all we are getting a little bit um, fed up with the drops here and yeah he did spot that drop ship i think or well it's it's a matter of fact now they used to be called drop ships no he's not going to find it i thought he saw it oh he did see it he did see it and he's going to take it down and now you can see yeah that's another 500 lost that is not good, and well, the Marines are being produced now, but still producing medifacts, still trying to uh, to get that uh, that going. It seems so. Get those drops off. But wow, Mutilus, dude, you are against four missile turrets. But he doesn't care. I don't care about your turrets. I just care about attacking stuff. Holy crap, just going straight in there. He knows how much damage he's going to take, obviously. Because these are the pros. He knows how much damage he's going to take. And he's willing to take the, the, the damage if he can trade that for the base and all of its SUVs. So we do have a big army coming out now. And Lucifer might actually get some advantage out of this one. Because if he can land the splash on those mutilists with the Widow Mines... That is going to be huge, but no, he burrs all of the Widow Mines at the same time. No, there you go, getting one splash off. He burrs all of them at the same time, meaning that they will all shoot at the units that are closest. And that is just no good. Um, yeah, the, the base does go down, and as I said, he might actually get a big advantage out of this attack. Because this attack is really aimed against those Mutilists. With all of those Marines... He might actually be able to do it, but oh, the Banelings do so much damage! Oh my god, and they just keep coming! Oh my 
my god, the entire army goes down to the Banelings. And yeah, he did take out most of the Mutalists though. So no more Mutalists, although there are still some of them, well, two of them alive. And no more um, army for the Terran in general. Uh, he does have some, some Medivex. And once again, we have this lag. I don't know what it is today, but it's, it's annoying. That's what it is. <sighs> so, a little bit of a calm before the storm, I guess. And let's see what the switch is. He is going for some Zerkling, some Mutalis. He's not going to switch into something else. Even though he can. I mean, he can pretty much do whatever. So yeah, six Widow Mines up. And the Widow Mines, yeah, they do a crap ton of damage. So they can actually do very well. There is a big attack coming in over here. And he is going back for that. It didn't really do anything. It, uh, it did a little bit of damage. Not a lot of, uh, of things actually going down. It uh, does prevent the mining for a little bit. Which is kind of annoying for our Terran player here. And he doesn't really land his base. Oh, he has a bird circling under it. Okay, that explains that. And all of the SUVs are going to go back to the base. Uh, this is probably worth it because Zerklings are worth nothing. So they cost nothing. And he prevented the mining for quite a while. So probably worth it. And we are going in with our new group of Mutalists. The, uh, yeah, the, the upgrades are coming out now. And we are actually getting uh, uh, Carapace upgrades. Ground carapace, which means that those uh, circlings are going to be better. And are we going to get a base race here? Because that is very unwise for our uh, our Terran player. Because, well, these mutalists are going to kill all of his SUVs way faster than he can kill the drones. And we are going to get a base race. The Terran player not going back for... Uh, yeah, he's not going back for the defense on his base. And he's just uh, going to go for it. He's going to obviously get something done. But he's going to lose a whole bunch of units just trying to attack that first base. Oh, the Banelings coming out once again. Uh, yeah, the Zerglings are coming back. They are coming back in. And we are going to go up against these Banelings. Banelings are not coming up. There you go. Finally he has his Banelings up. And... Yeah, it was too late anyway. So there are, yeah, well, there are multiple of these uh, these uh, widow mines out. He does need some detection, and there's the detection, and instantly takes out everything. So um, the GG comes out, and we do have a two and zero victory for J Dog. And yeah, that was a really nice game. Nice uh, aggression from the Mutalists and of course uh, good defense against the Mutalists. I mean these, these uh, uh, missile turrets, they actually do really well and then the switch to the Marines was actually really nice but he just couldn't make it work from that point onward. He, uh, he lost too many resources in his own uh, suicidal attacks and just couldn't make it work because he couldn't keep push putting on the pressure. He lost too much in those drops he stayed on uh, on those uh, those hell bats a little bit too long and shouldn't have dropped the third and the fourth and the fifth time and just lost units for no gain and that was just not good so anyway i hope you enjoyed and i will see you next time Gigi.